Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louisa Lee. Now Chinese food is world famous, but what about this idea? Three foreigners running a catering business in China or running a Chinese hot pot restaurant in China for Chinese diners. Indeed, and today we'll be meeting these people, and their spirits are not dampened by language barrier and also cultural differences. First stop, Chongqing. This is Chongqing, a major metropolis in southwest China, a city famous for its hot pot culture. Now, my mission here is to try to find and talk to Luca, a former Italian diplomat, and now he calls himself a food guy. Diplomat, a food guy. What happened? What made him make that decision? And how exactly does he plan to do to achieve his mission? We'll find out the story. Must be Luca. Yes, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Please grab a seat. Thank you. So what you're having is xiaomian. Yeah, I'm having traditional Chongqing noodles. In the first place, you love Chinese food yourself. No, no, actually, in the first place, I didn't really like Chinese food. It was no, you didn't. I, I did not like Chinese food. It was too far away from my culture. But then, what, you know, once I got into the, the local culture by speaking Chinese and talking to local people, mm. I kind of understood, you know, the, the, the value behind it. So I got closer to Chinese food. Mm. But I think that yeah, the most interesting thing about the Chongqing noodles is its spices. Mm. Yeah. They use lots of spices. Mm. You know, many um, countries have got different uh, spicy sauces. You know, yes, that's, uh, yes. that's a sauce from uh, from uh, England. Yeah, uh, that's from Mexico. Green uh, chili sauce. That's beautiful as well. It's yeah. a very interesting chili powder. It comes from Africa. From Africa. Yeah, it's a uh, peri peri chicken. Yeah, I think that Chinese sauces can offer even more to uh, like uh, foreign communities because okay. they have so much spices uh, in there. Spices that you know people never heard about. Yeah. And that's incredible. That's yeah. new tastes, that's new flavors. It's opening up a new entire sphere for them. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to create something like this or quite different from this? Or just like what you can find here locally? I think that Chinese food is not about takeaways and, uh, you know, kung uh, bao and fried rice. I think there's much more to say about Chinese cuisine. You were a diplomat yeah. before this yeah. at the Italian consulate. In Chongqing. What made you make the change? You got bored? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> bored, but I think there was something more interesting uh, that yeah. I could do. Right and now, what, what do you do now? Mm. What I'm doing is actually researching about the real taste of Chinese cuisine. 
how do you do the research? Uh, usually in like uh, local restaurants or markets. That's what I'm doing with Chongqing sauce now. Do you want to go and have a look at it? Shall we? Let's go. Let's go to the market. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. If you get my sauces, yeah. Okay. Let's go. Right. Yeah, a local one. Do you visit markets like this a lot? Uh, yes, I do really enjoy visiting local markets okay. um, because I get a better understanding of the daily life of people and of food culture as well. Okay, and if you try to tell the story of local Chongqing flavor, what is it and what is the story behind it? I think the story is about spicy people that make spicy food. So Chongqing people are hot. Uh, well, you know, they say that for women, you know, but, but, you know it's, uh, it's a general thing that they say. Right. But, uh, 这个怎么做你看你看拿那个二进脚你看一下那个二进脚它是红的你看一下它有一个二进脚是红的 uh, I think we're gonna buy some of the uh, bread chilies the yes. spicy ones and uh, some of the green chilies and we're gonna try and make a sauce out of it Right, the sauce you're, you've been talking about all the time Yes, we could do some uh, we could run some uh, tests in the laboratory later on mm. yeah. To decide what? Uh, I think to decide uh, how spicy they are and uh, how we uh, can mix them up with other spices and you know what's the final flavor going to be like. Okay, well done. Don't okay. forget your peppers. Thank you. Yeah. So, Shojun, this is our lab, and uh, we've got some of the nice spices that we got from the market. So, these are from the market, and you have a lab here? Yeah, we have a small lab, we're not big yet. Wait, 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 <laughs> what, what is this lab for? Uh, we actually researched about the amount of cap capsaicin in, uh, inside the peppers. So, by doing some uh, data analysis, uh, we came up with a spicy degree. Uh, and actually, there is a spicy degree. We do have a spicy degree for our sauces, you know. Okay. Uh, and we uh, start from zero uh, to 75. 75 is the highest one we have now. Uh, right. And we came up with this by analyzing uh, big data. And there is even a big data about how spicy it is. Yeah, it's it's a quantitative and qualitative analysis. So, you know, these sauces are actually the final product of you know these spices. Where shall I start? I think we're gonna go slowly on this. We're gonna start from the <laughs> least spicy. So <laughs> 12, 12 is mild, right? It's mild, yeah. Still surviving? Yeah, this is not yeah. right. <laughs> Slight, slightly stronger than this, and Cheers. sure, huh? <laughs> After you what? Kind of a, a sweet, isn't it? Yeah. The compound is like sweet That's and right. sour. That's good. No problem. Yeah, maybe we can start for the 45. This one. Yeah, that's right. It's getting there, huh? This is like the, uh, mm, yeah, spicier than that. Uh, like the, um, the, the hot pot taste that yeah. you're getting there. Yeah. And now I'm feeling it. We're going to move on to the 55 of the same sauce. Uh, you're going to be fine. Is this the regret one? 
<laughs> we, we're getting closer to that, you know? That's the regret <laughs> That's one. That's the regret one, you know? It's getting there. It really like wakes it. you up, you know? It's better than coffee, you know? In Italy, we have coffee, <laughs> and I think in China, you guys have, you know, chili sauce. Ah, uh, yeah, but still, I can manage. Yeah. But I need some water, though. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't see you crying, so that makes me feel, you know, happy. You know, they're not crying. Is that so not coming? It's, <laughs> not coming. it's not coming. It's not coming. 75, the last one. Man, it's better we've got to do you know, it. You've got to do it. <laughs> you've got to do it. Yeah. Huh. I don't know if you... You go oh, first, huh? you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've had it before, you know, that's the reason, you know? Fire, you know what? I'm right. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. But I can feel like now it's coming, right? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we can just say that we were just touched about the, you know, uh, the new sources, you know? Yeah, I've been brave, you know. It's not, brave. not easy. You know, it's yeah, just, my uh, voice is gone. <laughs> oh, it's coming. <laughs> so there was a way of um, oh. getting you introduced to you. fire extinguisher. Well, fire starts. I survived, huh? So we have um, Hong Xiao Dodo. Uh, uh, his name Hello. is Eduardo, and uh, he's working on. What are you working on? I'm just uh, uh, working on the chili paste, or the our, uh, tsuba okay. chili paste. So I'm basically doing the uh, traditional process. Uh, it smells beautiful. Uh, you can yeah. actually smell it. It's uh, mm. it's amazing. It smells 75 degrees. Uh, it's not 75. It's <laughs> very spicy. Yeah, quite spicy. Yeah. So this is just chili, like pure chili yeah. paste. And Laura. Yeah. Laura, we have a name for her as well in Chinese. You are the Laura. <laughs> Sweet and sour Laura. Sweet and sour yeah. Laura. Yeah. Her name yeah. is Tan Su Laura. So you're a local. <laughs> you I'm doing? making Dobanjiang. And oh, which I like. What is Dobanjiang? Uh, Dobanjiang is a very, it's the soul of Sichuan cuisine, I think. It is. Because um, chili pepper mm. is the soul of Chongqing cuisine, but Dobanjiang is the soul of Sichuan cuisine. Yeah. It's made in an interesting way because uh, it's made of, uh, in Sichuan, it's made with the uh, dried uh, mm. brown beans. Okay. Yeah, and fermented uh, uh, chili. It's very nice, the fact that in China you really do a lot of fermented food. Mario, so, yeah. so this is Mario Kung Pao, mm. that's his name, because he's uh, very fond of Kung Pao <laughs> chicken. And you all have general. interesting names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to prepare a new sauce, mm. so a secret sauce, yeah. using two ingredients. So we have sauce Mario, if we tell this in here, it's not going to be secret anymore. Is it, is <laughs> no. <it gonna> <laughs> so let's have it. Yeah, we have so huge tolerance have globally. <laughs> this is your own way. Yes. My own way. But it's still local or? It, is it kind of Italian now? No, it's kind of international. International? Of course. I, I still can't believe you, you, you have work in a real app, lab here. In China. Pretty in China. Uh, yeah. This is what we do like with, the, with computer and we have people here that help us out with the, with the data. <coughs> you know, even water has, is, is spicy. How, how spicy is water? Uh, water is like uh, one. Uh, all elements actually have some uh, capsaicin inside. Ah, and, um, see. Yeah. Just people just don't feel it. Right? Yeah, people don't feel it, but there's you know, a little content inside. And, so uh, water is one. Water is one. I, I can't believe water yeah. is spicy. Yeah, it's, it is spicy. <laughs> Seriously, you're also using the result of your research in real practices, you have a uh, restaurant. Yes, uh, we uh, do run restaurants as well, and uh, you know, these are just the um, research spaces uh, for the, the, the kitchen that we have, and mm. we're ready to bring these concepts abroad. I uh, see, yeah. I see. So I think that maybe it's time for dinner. I don't know if you're ready for that. So not just sauces, the, there is real food, right? Not just sauces. Sauces is just the, you know, the, f the starting point yeah. of getting into foreign's mind, telling them about Chinese food stories. Okay. But the big vision is Chinese food through restaurants abroad. Real food is on the way. Sh can, can we? Shall we? Shall we? Yeah, Shall we? okay. okay. Ching Salute. Salute. Oh, it's a good Italian. Mm. 
This is a hot pot restaurant? Uh, you're right, it's a hot pot restaurant run by an Italian. Um, that sounds like a joke, but it, that's reality. <laughs> and you run a hot pot restaurant in Chongqing? Yeah, that's one of my biggest challenge ever. But how different is it from a local restaurant? Hot uh, pot think, restaurant? Well, I think it's uh, different. Uh, really relies on the way hot pot is presented. We present the dishes individually, so usually dishes are served individually, one by one, like a you know Western style restaurant. We have a beautiful view. Some of the most beautiful dishes from all over the world, you know, right? Uh, New Zealand's meat, and we have you know lobster uh, as well, like fresh lobster. Dishes from all over the world with Chongqing flavor. You know, that can be a nice combination to get Chinese flavor abroad. You're trying to improve the image of foreigners about Chinese food overseas. Yeah. And how do you think? This is going to change that. Uh, actually, I do this to uh, prepare it as a research phase for getting it overseas. Okay. Um, in a way that can promote a new version of Chongqing hot pot to the Western world. But if you're trying to expand this practice to other routine, you know, uh, Chinese restaurants where you know cook dishes instead of just just hot pot, is that still going to work? even with your sources? I bet that is going to work. I mean, for sources, uh, I think that what I'm trying to innovate is not, you know, the Chinese cuisine itself. What I'm trying to innovate is the way of presenting Chinese cuisine in the world. So innovation here is in methodology, is not in the content The way itself. of presenting. That's right. But with the sources, it's the same. So Chongqing flavor, hot pot flavor, I'm just going to go and present it as a sauce. So maybe not everyone will go for hot pot restaurants yeah. abroad, but some other people could still experience hot pot flavor at their home. If the sauce is not the ingredient that Chinese people would have for Chinese dishes in China, how, how can you say that's a way of Chinese cooking? That okay. you're going to use that to help your mission? I'm going to do that by not changing uh, habits, food habits of people abroad. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it'd be a too hard mission for me to do. But I'm going to uh, insert some Chinese flavors inside the daily routines and I think the easiest way of doing that is by not teaching them how to cook Chinese food maybe is telling them how to add Chinese flavor within their daily lives and then you believe your sources are going to achieve that of course yeah they can yeah all right yeah uh, I would love to train foreign chefs to do Chinese food are you going to send them to China to get the training or have them trained in, in other countries? Actually, I'm going to have them trained in other countries. I'm preparing some training bases in both Europe and the United States. But it's not easy, I mean, for Chinese dish, for Chinese cooking. I have to say that it wasn't easy for uh, chefs that were learning how to make Italian uh, food. Same thing. It was the same thing, you know, mm. tomato sauce, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use mozzarella cheese and all of that. Mm. It was a tough challenge, but now we get, you know, very good uh, international chefs that make beautiful Italian food just, mm. at, just as Italians do. Chinese food uh, has a huge, massive historical and cultural heritage. So, you know, there's loads of uh, young chefs that are willing to learn about uh, new cuisines. Mm. And I think it's time for China now. We had Marco Polo before. Yeah, I, I, I think he, he was here for quite, quite, quite a and while. now we know? have Luca. Oh, <laughs> too far away, you know? But maybe I can, I can do... Salute. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I will try my best, though, you know? Mm. Actually, I have something for you before you leave. Yeah. I have uh, something that will remind you of Chongqing whenever you are in Beijing or anywhere else in the world. Pepper sculpture. You're right. So chili pepper, it will keep you spicy for the rest of your life then. Okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All the best wishes. Well, and with the pepper sculpture, it's the end of my story here. I'll go, well, actually, before I go back to Beijing, definitely I'm going to enjoy my hot pot with Luca. So see you back in Beijing. Let's, let's continue. Okay. <laughs>
we celebrate food in all its glory, whether it's a mother's cooking, fine dining, or even street food. It not only forms our culture identity, but it also allows us to bond with those who share a similar appetite. Today, we'll meet someone who left New York decades ago to pursue her culinary passion in Beijing's hutongs. We will be taking a trip with her down memory lane, quite literally. Hello, Jen. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm good. How are you? Tell us about this place. Yeah, so this is the original location of Black Sesame Kitchen, a cooking school and private dining space, and it started here 10 years ago. Wow, so this is where it all started for you in these traditional alleys. Yes, yes, and I lived right around the corner from here. That's actually how I found the space because I was living nearby. And uh, I wanted to start teaching some of my friends, mm -hmm. my, my foreign friends here in Beijing, how to cook. Right. So that's how this began. Wow. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. I can't imagine how it was for you to move from the States and to live in the hutongs. How was it like for you? It was quite different. You know, I had to trade in a car for a bicycle, <laughs> right. for example, because, you know, these little alleys you get a snake through, anywhere. right? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was very different 10 years ago here. There were a lot uh, fewer people, a lot fewer stores, a lot of people on the streets playing mahjong mm. and vegetable hawkers and all kinds of local life. Um, it was more like a community back then, rather than right now it's very touristy and very commercial now. I mean, in this courtyard here lived eight families wow. all together. You know, just how neighbors are really close and living right next to each other in small spaces and, you know, this is where I learned how to uh, wrapped dumplings, and I also uh, learned about Chinese cheese here. Yeah, so we all we began for you. Yeah. Chinese cheese? Yeah. yeah. So should we try it? Yeah. It it's called Chinese cheese. Mm. Is it, it looks more like a like a pudding or like a yogurt. They call it cheese. Mm. But it's more like a yogurt. Yeah. yeah. So Chinese cheese is a little bit different mm. than American or mm. Western cheese, you, you could say. So how was the learning experience like? I mean, you came all, you know, you came all the way from the States here to learn cooking. It was a challenge. I mean, I went to a local cooking school in the yeah. Hutongs with lots of young uh, migrant workers who were looking for jobs in restaurants, and my teacher didn't like me because How come? my Chinese was not fluent at that time, and you know looking like a Chinese person and not speaking the language or reading it fluently yeah. is often difficult, but it got my Chinese up to speed. Yeah, would you and say it was a cooking. really arduous journey for you? Challenging at times. Challenging. It was tough, but it was the most memorable time I had in China too. Yeah. Did you ever want to give up or just you know I'm done with this? I want to head back home and go back to the states and, and maybe have an office job there, nine to five. No, no, no. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. No, the life I've had here has been amazing. And even though my parents weren't super supportive of me in the beginning, I think they came around to the fact that I needed to find my own path. Yeah. Yeah. And you came here alone, right? Yes, I did. I so, did. so yeah. was it lonely at times? Did you find anyone you could talk to or consult with, or, or did you have a mentor here? I did have a mentor. Her name is Teacher Wong, and we're going to go to her house to uh, show you how to make dumplings. Right. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Okay. okay.
carry on in Miss Wong's kitchen, and things are going to get exciting and delicious, right, Jen? That's right. Yeah, we're here to introduce you to Chairman Wong. She was my first cooking mentor when I started going to a local cooking school, and we're going to be wrapped up with today together. Right. She could be credited to success, right? Of course. Wow, so Jen's I know. But let's see what Jen can do. <laughs> in the classroom, there wasn't actually a lot of cooking going mm. on. It was all about copying things, and I wanted to learn how to cook. So Wang Lao Shi uh, helps me by, you know, actually giving me practical cooking lessons mm. first at the cooking school, and then we moved to her home. So you guys have some private and sessions together. Yes, we had a lot mm. of private sessions. She taught me not only how to cook, but basically what the lives of uh, local Chinese were like in yeah. Beijing. Yeah. And lunch is served. I've been waiting for this moment. I know. We've been so hungry. <laughs> well, I have to say, this is so good. Delectable. Delicious. Uh, it's amazing. This is so good. Hi, Joseph表现我们中国的菜,这也是象征着人生,本来就是酸甜苦辣,全得经过各个阶段吧。饺子呢,按北京的这个规矩传统呢,需要吃点酸。如果你们不嫌弃这个味儿,可以品尝。back to the past. It does, it really does. I mean, I used to have a bike just like that when I biked to the hutongs um, in my, to my cooking school in the yeah. hutongs. Yeah. And how about that cookie jar? I remember all the Asian families had like cookie metal boxes and we opened it. The almond cookies. And, and, yeah, but it's like a, a sewing kit or something. Right, <laughs> right, right. We used to preserve them for other uses. <laughs> How people would just kind of live on the streets. It's like you have your hutong courtyard. Yeah. So people are just ha like hanging out on the streets. Yes, it was very communal. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like a social gathering, right? Yeah. 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 And I see this is there's a sound of hutong room. Yeah, let's go in and hear some of the sounds. Okay, this is my baozi. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. It has been a really amazing experience to really visualize the life of Hutong. It really has, yeah. yeah. Are you getting hungry yes, at all? Yes, I am, especially yeah. having, hearing the sound of us selling buns. Yeah. Why don't we go to Black Sesame Kitchen? I'm excited. Yeah. Let's see the wait. All right. Welcome to Black Sesame Kitchen. Wow, I'm, I love how it's like hitting away in the alley. Yeah, we're really uh, tucked away far back in the Butons here. And it's really quiet here, it's really peaceful and serene. Yeah, and you're really close to the Forbidden City. Right, so. it's really nice. We're here with Chef Zhang, Zhang Shifu. Zhang Shifu, you're my friend. Now, it's become my friend. I've been 
然后我的面馆呢，呃，是比较开放的。他当时在你的餐厅，他刚开始第一个第一个任务是什么？端盘。对对对对,对。和<笑>面，嗯，到削面、收钱、卖面。<笑>嗯，这些他都做。其实很久你才让我摸那个面，嗯、那个面是<笑>是他的宝贝、嗯。我揉一下这个面团，然后。所以，所以现在都会了吗？对，这个就是面粉跟水，<笑>然后张师傅已经帮我们揉了一会儿，然后交给你。交给高手。<笑>交给高手。削面的时候有一个特点是刀不离面。你要不要试一下？哦、我可以试一下吗？我可以，那我需要先端盘子吗？<笑>还是我先洗碗先 ？OK。这样。对对对对对对。那那个宽，很聪明嘛那那宽那个宽度，啊？宽度自己掌握。宽度自己掌握。对。才刚夸夸奖完，我们就已经。Was、um, shaving the noodles. That's also like like an art, a skill, right? Yeah, I mean it's funny because when you talk to them about it, you know, Teacher Wang and Chef Song, they'll say no, cooking's not an art. It's、mm. just a trade. But really, from my point of view, it is an art. A lot of people say that to really experience authentic cuisine, you have to try the street food. You know, all the street food and the art that you see and things like. Bing Tong Hulu, the candied hawthorns, and got artists who do things. And you have the pancakes on the street, right? The jam、yeah. bean, right? Yeah, and it's all it's all an art form. Yeah. yeah. What did your mother cook at home? I mean, I'm assuming it was Chinese cuisine. I was always a little bit embarrassed when my American friends would come over and smell all the, you know, jang yo or the soy sauce. And, yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, when I was growing up, my mom would make us lunch, and、yeah. we would go to school, and it would be like Asian food, and you'd be embarrassed because you know, other students were eating, I don't know, peanut butter. Sandwich, like chicken sandwich,、yeah. and I would always open my lunch bag and be like, and then、yeah. close it again, right? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I remember one time when I was a kid, my mother prepared niang fen for me,、mm-hmm. like the grass jelly, and kids said, "Ew, you're eating tadpoles! I can't、oh. believe you're eating tadpoles." <laughs> <laughs> for kids at the time, you would be quite embarrassed yeah. at that. Yeah,、situation. I mean, just, I just wanted to be American. My favorite food was、mm-hmm. spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, right. Yeah. But now you have your own private kitchen. That's right. That's right. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> right. I mean, here people get to experience the cooking up front, right in our open kitchen, and they see the cooking, they eat it, and they smell it. They smell all the oil and the spice that I was ashamed of when I was a kid. So it's actually not a restaurant. It's more like a platform to spread Chinese culture. We're a private dining,、mm-hmm. event space, and cooking school. So we're really about Chinese culture、mm-hmm. and Chinese. Food and bringing that to the world, like spreading Chinese culture, spreading、right. spreading good food、yeah. to the world. And I heard business is really good. You guys have rave reviews on, online, and it's really hard to get a booking here. So that's right. right? That's so right.、Yeah. so I have to personally text you to get a seat, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll try to get you in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> the perks I have interviewing Jen. Thank you again today for sharing your story with us. This is Dali in southwestern China's Yunnan province, and I'm here to meet a French guy, Joe, who quit his job as a reporter to open a private kitchen in an almost abandoned old house in an old village. And he says he's a storyteller. He tells stories through food. What does it mean? Let's find out. Okay, 
this is the village and the old house is right in there but i was told that joe might be now in the mountains i'll just go find him there This is the mountain right behind the old village, and I found Joe right here. Hey, Joe. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I didn't to expect you. to see you here. <laughs> yeah. Nice view. Yeah, I have to say that's the village, right? That's yeah, the village is just there. It's down it's there. Fifteen minutes walk from my home. Well, what are you doing here? In the mountain? I'm trying to find some uh, mushrooms, I'm trying to find some herbs to cook and of course I go there also to relax, relax with too. friends uh, from the village. Yeah, so yeah. this is where you find some, some of the uh, ingredients you use Some, to cook. some, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, no, yeah not yeah. all of them? No, no, not all of them. I would <laughs> like to but it's impossible. How long have you been here? in this beautiful place. Five years already. Five yeah. years. You know uh, the local people too. Yeah, of course. I, and they I know you. Yeah, of course. I, sure? I mean, they all know me <laughs> and I know uh, most of them. One of them is right here, right? Yeah. Let's talk to them, see how well they know you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <笑>跟妈妈来就习惯了但是我们这边菜它也很喜欢吃啊它也喜欢它去过你们家吗啊经常来经常啊每个星期最少每个星期最少每个星期最少每个星期最少每个星期最少每个星期最少每个星期最少
everything is set. Not really everything because we're not seeing all the dishes, but basically the table is set and um, are we ready? Yeah, kind of. I will have to go back to the kitchen to cook more, but this is the, the starting the dish we are going so to This is not all we have for tonight. No, 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 no. These are cold dishes. I used to work in Lebanon, so okay. I, I, it's a dish I liked when I was going there in the 90s, and so I, I, I wanted to, to keep it as, a, as a something. Lebanese plus a Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Kind and this of. This is Chinese plus. Uh, this is, no, this is more like, a, I don't know how you Chinese call it. Though. Yeah, it's not Chinese, but it, it's looking Chinese, but it's more like a Mediterranean. Okay, let's say Chinese plus Mediterranean. Yeah, you can say. French plus. Well, this one I didn't introduce yet. This is uh, asparagus, and since we here we find very small ones, very tender, they are raw. And I, I, I did this dish recently in Shenzhen, and I quite like it, so I did it again today. It's with Shen uh, Dan, so these preserved duck eggs. Can we have some wine? And <laughs> the wine is here. This is a very special wine. I'm Shangri -La, yeah. And I do hope you will enjoy it. Chin -chin. Cheers. Chin -chin. Yeah, cheers. Salute. Salute. <laughs> And here comes the staple food. So it looks like, you know, it's served and cooked in a Spanish seafood rice way, but this is... My grandfather is Spanish. Oh, so right. So it's part of my origin, and then I adjusted with the local ingredients. The local Yunnan ham, pork ribs, it's also rice, because it's Chinese, usually when they eat, like they invite people, the last dish would be rice. And so I keep yeah. this structure of the, of the meal with the last dish as a rice. But it's not white rice or fried rice, it's a Spanish rice. But the, the idea is the same. At the end of the meal, uh, we have the rice. That's the staple food, like we said, the main food. Yeah. But it's a presentation of Spanish and, and, and local Chinese yeah, cultures yeah, put yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. And I guess Nuna, your daughter, she must like it well, a lot. She's partly Spanish, French, <laughs> Chinese, so she has everything in her. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so, Jill, thank you very much for your food and also, most importantly, the stories you told us about these food. What a night. Let's enjoy the food. That's most important. Let's go. <laughs> and, um, ching ching. Salute. Enjoy. Salute. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, their path is apparent as they are determined to win the hearts of diners with their take on Chinese cuisine. Well, in the end, it's about the food, it's about the taste, whether it's in Chongqing, in Beijing, in Yunnan, whether it's fusion or Chinese food, if the taste is good, we're happy. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. This is Crossover. See you next time. Bye.